So let's talk about lenses. Now, lenses are a big part of cinematic storytelling, probably just as important as the camera you're using to record the footage with. For video specifically, the lenses I wanna highlight are the RF 24 to 70 F 2.8, the RF 70 to 200 F 2.8, the RFS 18 to 150, and it has a range F 3.5 to F 6.3, and lastly, the older EF 70-200 Mark III f2.8 and the EFS 17-55mm f2.8. Now, one of the biggest things you'll notice right up front with lenses is the price. You might look at something that has the same zoom range, but it might cost $1,000 more or $2,000 more, and you wonder, well, it has the same ability to zoom, why does it cost so much more or why is it so much bigger? Well, this has a lot to deal with the competency of the lens to capture light. In short, that f2.8, what that number is basically saying is the amount of light the lens can let in. Why does this even matter? Well, light is what provides the information to the sensor in the camera. So the more light that a lens can capture, the better it can perform in pretty much all lighting conditions and especially low light conditions. This f-stop or the aperture of the lens is not necessarily consistent with zoom lenses. It's very hard for, just technology speaking, for a lens to have a consistent aperture all throughout. That's why a lot of people buy prime lenses. You can't zoom them, but the image clarity and the sharpness is outstanding. A lot of photographers prefer using prime lenses because they just look incredible, especially for fine detail and textures. They just look amazing. My experience, zoom lenses are the way to go for videography because the amount of dynamic situations you're gonna find yourself in, you're gonna wish you had a zoom lens so that you don't have to take 10 steps back or 15 steps forward. You're constantly crouching, moving around. It's just a lot easier with a high quality zoom lens. To keep things simple, as I'm referring to them, you should know the older lens technology system that Canon has is EF. The newer is RF. So whenever you hear EF lenses, those are the previous generation and RF are the newest generation. Now, not to add more confusion to it, but RFS are for crop sensor cameras. EFS are for crop sensor cameras. So whenever you hear that S at the end, that means that lens is for crop sensors. All you need to know for right now with crop sensor lenses is that they're a more inexpensive way to get a versatile lens for videography or photography. Let's take a look at the actual aperture size or how much light is being let in. Look at the amount of glass in that. And this is the RF, F2.8. There's a huge amount of difference of information that these lenses can capture. And they're both relatively the same zoom range, except this costs $600 and this costs over $3,000. <laughs> Filming at 70 millimeter F2.8. Zoom in a bit. Line this up a bit better. There we go. So Roliflex, R8 in the back, Canon 80D, the Y by hat in the background. It's having a little bit of hard time going right to the edge. We're gonna try it with this little guy. So let's go 70. Oh man, that's punched in quite a bit. ADD, R8, my by hat, back to the Roly Flex. Now let's go 150, because can't quite get 200, but look at that with the crop, pretty much there. That still performs quite well.
Now, the important thing to consider if you're already thinking, oh, well, I'll just buy a, a crop sensor lens or an RFS lens, you have to consider the performance in the long term. These lenses are inexpensive and can come in handy in unique situations, but if you're looking to invest for the long term, you should consider getting full frame lenses. The nice thing is, let's say you bought a crop sensor camera, you can still use a full frame lens on there. So let's say for example, you couldn't afford the RF 70 to 200. Well, you could just buy an EF 70 to 200, which has the same aperture of F 2.8. And in a lot of ways, I think this is almost better because unlike this lens, which protrudes when you zoom, this lens, all the mechanisms are inside internal. So it's much harder for dust and mud and rain, anything to get in here. In a lot of ways, I still think this is the better field lens. And instead of over $3,000, this you could probably find used a Mark II or a Mark I for probably $1,500 or $2,000. The only issue you're gonna run into is that EF lenses don't mount to RF camera bodies, but you can get an adapter. Put that on, match the red lines, not dots. Red dot. And there you go. Got an EF lens on an R body. And now you just saved yourself a thousand bucks. But you're probably asking yourself, is there a compromise in quality with the EF compared to the RF? I'll just show you. So taking this R7, this is the EF. And I got this little birdhouse here. I'm gonna switch my stabilizer on. So here's the EF at 70 millimeters. I'll zoom it in at 200 millimeters. Now let's swap to the new RF lens and compare the images. At 70 millimeters, and I'm gonna punch in to 200 millimeters. I don't know, they look pretty close. <laughs> and to save yourself a thousand bucks, yeah, the EF and an adapter plate might be worth it. The 70 to 200 EF F2.8 is probably one of my favorite lenses of all time. And I've actually never bought one. When you think about buying these brand new, it's a hefty price tag to put in your camera bag. And truth is, I've always just rented them from McBain camera because it's a lot of money to buy one of these lenses, but they've been out for a while now. So to be able to pick one up for a couple thousand bucks, now it's a little bit easier to justify having this beautiful outdoor lens and put it in your camera bag. So I just had to swap lenses and put the 70 to 200 on the R5, which is filming me right now, just so that I can show you the 24 to 70. Now this lens is such a highly versatile lens to use for almost any circumstance. And this is really my advice is to get a lens like this or this lens exactly. Now I realize new they're about $3,000, but for most videography and photography applications, this is really all you need. The 24 to 70 zoom range is really good and the image clarity and sharpness of everything just looks really nice at an f2.8. Now I realize it's $3,000, but if this is the only lens you have to worry about buying and you can keep it for years and it'll still be useful and relevant, it's the one to get. Now. I also know that Canon announced the brand new 24 to 105 f2.8, first of its kind. My suspicion is that's going to be the everything lens to replace the 24 to 70. The good news is, is that when that happens and a lot of people are looking to help pay for the new lens, you're going to see these on the market drop considerably. So keep an eye peeled for RF 24 to 70 F 2.8 lenses. They might be $3,000 new, but you might be able to pick one up used for 2,500 bucks, maybe even less. Well, looks like the snow and rain is coming. So I'm going to move this inside and actually that's, I forgot to mention something really important. So um, especially with zoom lenses or any, any lens for videography, if it doesn't have image stabilization, you are going to be very upset <laughs> because that shakiness, a lot of it is mitigated with 
the built-in image stabilization in the lens. And the nice thing is, is that it's a mechanical image stabilization. Um, conversely, if you were to look at image stabilization in a phone or a camera body like the R5 or the R7, they use digital image stabilization. Um, why does that matter? Well, it doesn't really look natural. Sometimes if there's a lot of shake, you get this weird wobble effect and the picture just looks pretty crappy. It's, it, it's, it's almost warping and it looks bad. Um, so if you get a really good lens with image stabilization, um, you might not even need digital image stabilization in the camera body. You can just use uh, what's in the lens. And that's what I do. It's really effective. And uh, anyways, if you're buying a used 70 to 200, um, I had to confirm this because I wasn't 100%, but the Mark I EF 70 to 200 does not have image stabilization. So you might find the Mark I pretty inexpensive used, but buy the Mark II or Mark III. This is the, the Mark III and it has image stabilization. So um, just, just consider that when you're buying these. And um, one of the more common things you're gonna hear uh, with lens technology is coatings. Now, you would think that, oh, well, a coating shouldn't cost a lot of money, but these coatings are actually pretty important if razor sharp image clarity is uh, very important to you. There's a, a kind of a lens right at the back here, and sometimes it can reflect and bounce light, uh, creating this kind of sort of misinformation for the sensor and the camera. So you get this kind of distortion in the image quality. Now, to me, for videography, it doesn't bother me that much, but in photos, it could really tick you off. So they put these coating on the lenses, which basically dampen that uh, light from bouncing around. They're almost like absorbing the light uh, in a way that mitigates aberrations. And that's why they cost more. And that's how the technology has improved. But Again, between like say the Mark II, which doesn't have those coatings versus the Mark III, uh, I don't think that's enough for me to justify spending more money on a Mark III, for example. Really what you want, I think, for videography or what I want, I want the, the horsepower of the lens in terms of image stabilization and quality and the, the manufacturing of the glass and the aperture. And there are a lot of other things that I think are important to have. And a bit of aberration in the image is like, I barely notice, uh, no one's really gonna notice. But again, this is your quality standards, right? You, you might be producing at a very high caliber where this is extremely important. So uh, again, totally subjective, um, but I think even for you know, sort of professional grade, uh, a lot of people wouldn't even notice. I suggest either buying a used EF lens for a couple thousand bucks, maybe the 24 to 105 F4. Um, but if you can, I really suggest getting the 24 to 70 f 2.8 uh, simply because it's diverse. It would be a workhorse. You'd use it all the time and it is useful in almost every application. Throw it on a stabilized gimbal, uh, throw it on a tripod, go handheld. That lens is extremely versatile and the image quality is superb. Plus, uh, if you ever wanted to resell it, it's a desirable lens an f2.8 the focal range in it is um, really good like the the zoom function like people will want that lens in fact see if you can find one used they're new but um, like i said before that f2.8 24 to 105 that's coming out may drop the price on those because that new lens may become more desirable as the everyday carry